All right, guys, uh, welcome to ICP for today's e-learning. Uh, today, what we're looking at is kind of going in reverse of what we've been doing the last few days. Uh, so the last few days, we've been looking at going from the chemical formula to the chemical name. Today, we are going to be looking at going from the chemical name to the chemical formula. Now, uh, we are going to start out with a mixture of ionic and covalent compounds, and then we'll add in some transition metals tomorrow, and we'll add in some polyatomic ions tomorrow as well. Um, but today, we're just focusing on simple ionic compounds and simple covalent compounds. All right, so to start off with, we're going to look at this compound here. Now, when we are reading the name, we need to identify a couple things. Number one, are there prefixes being used? If prefixes are being used, writing the chemical formula is extremely straightforward and simple. So as we read this one, we have dinitrogen monoxide. Now, as you read that and hear that, hopefully you recognize that di, di is a uh, prefix, and you also recognize that mono is a prefix as well. Now, di, if you don't remember, that means two, and mono means one. Now, those numbers, uh, can you guys see that? I don't know if you can. So, those numbers are going to be attached with that particular element. So, up here, this says di-nitrogen. Well, nitrogen is the element within and since it's di, we know that there's two of those. And then when we come down here, monoxide, you hear the oxide in that, oxide coming from oxygen. So we know we have oxygen. And since there's only one of those, we don't write the one down. All right, so remember, if there's a one, you don't write the one, you just leave it as is. So the chemical formula for this particular problem would be N2O. All right, so there's that one. Let's come over here to this example over here, calcium chloride. Now, as you read that name, calcium chloride, you will notice that there are no prefixes. Since there are no prefixes, we know that this is ionic because only covalent compounds have prefixes. Now, when you are creating the formula for an ionic compound, you need to know the charges. So we know calcium is Ca, and we know chloride is Cl. So we know we have those two elements, but we need to know the charges of those two. Now, if you remember, as you look at your periodic table, all of these elements in group 1 have a plus 1 charge. All of these elements in group 2 have a plus 2 charge. Aluminum has a plus 3 these elements have a minus three, these elements have a minus two, and these elements have a minus one. Most of you had start, have started to write those charges at the top of the groups. If you have not done that, I would suggest you do that. So with that in mind, calcium is in group two, which means it has a plus two charge. Now chloride, Cl, is in group 17, which means it has a minus one charge. Now, when we write the actual formula, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get this so that the charges cancel out. So currently we have a plus two, and currently we have a minus one charge. So if we want those charges to cancel out, we're gonna need more chlorines than we do calcium. All right, in fact, we'll need two chlorines in order to cancel out the plus two charge. Now, that's one way of doing it, trying to figure out how to get those charges to cancel out. The other method is kind of doing a switch, switcheroo method. Okay, in that, you take this plus two and you bring it down below chloride, and you take this one and you bring it next to the CA. This is telling us that calcium is now just one calcium, and that chlorine, there's going to be two chlorines. So we figured that out because we just took these charges and we crossed them. Now, if you remember, what did we say about ones? We don't want to write the ones. So if we were to rewrite this, we would have just CaCl. 
2. And that is going to be our final chemical formula. So this right here is our answer. Now the key thing for these ionic ones is you know the charges, and then you take those charges and you switch a room, you swap them, you replace them. Okay, so that is uh, that example. Now, let's come back over here to this example on this side. We have sulfur dioxide. Now, as you hear sulfur dioxide, dioxide, hopefully you've noticed that there is a prefix, which means since there is a prefix, this is a covalent compound. So we have a covalent compound, and so we don't worry about charges. We're just looking at what the prefixes are. Now, we have sulfur. And you notice there's no prefix given on sulfur. Okay, since there's no prefix, that means there's just one of them. Okay, so no prefix just means one sulfur. Now, as we look here, we have dioxide, oxide coming from oxygen. And since it has the prefix of two, we're going to put the number two uh, for the prefix of di. So all we end up with is SO2. Now, at this point, hopefully you guys are kind of like me and realizing covalent compounds with their prefixes are really easy to write their chemical formulas. You just have to know your prefixes and know your elements, and you write the uh, chemical formula down. All right, so this is our third example. Let's go over, back over here and look at a fourth example. All right, so we have calcium oxide. Now, as we look at that calcium oxide, there's no prefix, which means it is ionic, and since it's ionic, we have to know the charges. Now, calcium, Ca, and oxide, O, those are our two elements we're looking at. Now, we already established earlier that calcium has a plus two charge. And oxygen, oxygen, which is in group 16, so since it's in group 16, that means it's going to have a minus two charge. Now, what we we're working with is that we swap those charges, but I want you to notice something. We have a plus two and a minus two. The plus two and minus two already cancel out. So what we're going to do if those charges already cancel out is we're just going to erase the charges and leave the chemical formula as is. So we get rid of, ignore those charges, and we just rewrite this as Ca. Oh, and there is our chemical formula. All right, so that is uh, what you guys are going to be doing today. Uh, you will find your assignment is 12 problems. Um, it's going to be a mixture of ionic and covalent. Uh, those are right here on where you got the link for this assignment. Um, you can attempt it three different times, um, and I will keep the best score. A uh, couple things to remember is, number one, if you have prefixes, then the prefixes are pretty straightforward. You just take those prefixes and attach them to that element. If you don't have prefixes, it is ionic, and then that is when you're looking at the charges and switching those charges, unless those charges cancel out, and then you just ignore charges. All right, so that is your assignment for today. Um, go ahead and get started on that. If you have any questions, please let me know.